Hello, Tech Math Nerds. Today I'm going to talk about GMath. And so I'm going to uh, not talk a lot about the actual uh, program GMath because many of you have already looked at it. But I want to talk about a couple of things that you maybe don't know about as far as GMath is concerned. So, for a basic overview, what you can do with GMath is you can create math expressions, you can create graphs, and you can create some fairly simple statistical displays that you can input directly into a document uh, using this GMAP tool. One additional thing that I want to talk about is the handwriting entry. And as I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about each of these individual things. The only main thing that I'm going to talk about is a couple of things in the math expressions section. So I'm actually going to click on that and talk about that first. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is the handwriting uh, information. Now, I'm assuming that most of you know what GMath looks like a little bit, but just to give you a couple of uh, basic things, it runs on LaTeX, and when you click on different LaTeX commands and bring it in here, this is where it displays the LaTeX so that you can see what it looks like. The nice thing about using LaTeX is that once you know a code, you can type in the code yourself instead of continually using uh, the GMath buttons and stuff like that. But if you scroll down, you'll find where some of the GMath buttons are and so you have your basic buttons like your exponents and your fractions and your uh, your roots um, you also if you go in here so there's an internal um, scroll bar and you'll have to notice this but you there's lots of different things that you can have your pi and infinity symbols um, you have matrices, quadratic formula, uh, your Greek symbols, uh, all sorts of different things that you can use. I'm going to make a really quick uh, equation and I'm going to insert it into um, this document. So I'm just going to use fractions and you'll notice that I clicked on the button and as soon as I clicked on the button what it did is it brought it up here to where my latex is and then it defaults to having A's and B's in different locations. So if I wanted to add different things so let's say in place of A now in place of A I actually want to put uh, a squared value so I'm going to do X squared so I'm going to put a squared in here and then do minus 5 and then for B, I will do uh, x plus 7 in the denominator. Now, you'll notice that after I typed in the fraction, if I wanted to do another fraction, if I type in the exact same command over here, I could do a fraction without going and finding the button down below. So it might be quicker for some of you to start learning LaTeX and be able to plug it in. It, uh, otherwise, it might be quicker just to go down and find the buttons every time. But in any case, uh, if I want to add something here, I could hit plus and then choose another button. Maybe I wanted to do a square root. So I could put a square root in here, or uh, since I have the n, I could put a cube root of 538, uh, and I could add that couple of things that you can do with this. Uh, one thing that you can do with this is you can increase the size of the image. So you can do two times, three times, or four times the size. So if I wanted to make this bigger, I would just hit the 3x button, and it would make uh, what I want to insert bigger. And then when I'm ready to insert it, I can just hit the insert button, and it will show up in my document. Now, Another thing that you can do, and it's kind of off to the side here, is if you want to add additional things, you can always clear what's currently in here. Go to the next spot in your document where you want to add something, and then you can restart uh, what you want to add. Uh, one thing that I think a lot of people don't know that they can do is once you've put something in a document from GMath, you can always edit it. And how you edit it is you just select the thing that you want to make an edit on. And then right here there's a button that says Edit from Doc. So if I click on this, it will bring in whatever the GMath was from the document over here. And let's say that I wanted to do this 7 and I wanted to actually make it an x squared. So I can do the formatting tool for x squared. And I'm just going to type that in um, quickly here using some latex commands. And then once I've changed what I want to change, I can hit insert. And it'll insert that into, um, into that previously done uh, GMath equation. So I can go in and I can edit expressions uh, that way. So one other thing that you can do is you can do a handwriting recognition. And I think that this is a underutilized feature in the program. You can either do it uh, from the main add-on menu 
or you can do it from just clicking right here. And if you click right here where it says handwriting def recognition, what it'll do is once you're done, it'll put your handwriting recognition in this latex uh, thing and you can edit it further if you want. So if I click on handwriting recognition so that it comes up and you can take a look at it. One of the best things about this is that if you have a smart board, you can basically write on your smart board pretty easily, and then it'll convert to, uh, to an expression that you can insert in your doc, which I think is great. Uh, one thing that I will say about this is I'm using my mouse, so I'm not going to have you painstakingly watch me do that. I'm going to skip to the end as I do this work. I'm going to slow down for just a second here because one thing that I want to show you is that as you're going through the process of writing things in here, if you pause what you're writing, it'll show you what you've got so far. Okay, so one other thing is I made a mistake here, and it's not supposed to be x minus 2. It's supposed to be x plus 2. So I have a couple of choices. I can either uh, add this to the latex, uh, and it'll come over here, and I'll just find where that minus is and change it to a plus. Otherwise, if I want to, I can always change it up here too. And if I add a plus over here, or uh, the line to make it a plus, it should recognize that as x plus 2 now and then I can move that into the latex. You'll notice over here on the right side, there is an undo button, so if you ever make something and it doesn't recognize it the way that you want it to, uh, you can always go back and fix it. Uh, there is also a add recognized math to doc. If I'm happy with it exactly the way that it is, I can have it go automatically into the document. The other option I have is to send it to the latex to create an expression. So let's say that I'm not quite done with this. I want to make some changes or something like that. I can hit this button. I'll send it to the latex, which means it will, it will go over here. And then, like I said, if this was a minus on accident and I wanted to change it to a plus, I could make that change. Um, I also noticed that my cursor wasn't in the right place, so I'm going to put my cursor where I want it. I'm going to change the size of it or something like that, and then I'm going to insert it. So those are just a couple of the cool features of GMath that some people might not recognize are there. So I hope that that helps in some of the things that you want to use GMath for.